hi everyone welcome to this channel the merchant consopreneur on tutorials your go-to channel for everything about construction social engineering just explanation about everything so in my last video i talked about two structures so we treated logins calculation of um, the quantity of materials quantity of wood needed for logins and logins are usually consulted with them um, two by two wood they were also I saw you made another video about uh, roofing sheets. So today, or in this video, I'll be looking at the elements of a roof structure. Now the roof structure proper, let's look at this element. And this element, I'm looking at the very simplest of the simplest uh, roof type. And then also the roof members to be considered include the wall plates, the fissure boards, the tie beams, the struts, rafters, and pole lines. And looking at this, image you see each of them was um explained like we pointed at it they were um, acknowledged right so we're looking at it bit by bit and taking them using exam examples to get the quantity of wood that we needed for each of it be it the wall plate the pole lines the after the tie beams any one of them fissure boards so let's take the wall plates first right so a wall plate is a timber or wood that is placed on top of blocks or, or roof beams that runs through the perimeter of the building. Just like you say you have a rectangular building. The wall plate runs on the walls through the perimeter. Just only the perimeter, not even inside. Right? So it is the base where other roof structures rest on. The rafters or the trusses, everything is rest on. It is resting on it and it um, is fixed. And then so the wall plate helps to distribute the weight of the roof evenly across the wall, right? It transfers the load from the roof structure down is the base. So three by four woods are usually used for wall plates. Although in some construction whereby you have bigger um depend on the roof shell, right? Depend on the roof you have this there. So the wall plates look at the image and then look at what it's pointing at. The wall plate is going through the perimeter. Like, so that's the wall plate and what it stands for. So let's look at a quick example of um, how to calculate the quantity of um, 3 by 4 wood needed for a wall plate construction, right? So let's consider a building of 100 meters perimeter dimension. And then we need to estimate the quantity of wall plates needed for the building. So looking at the plan, 100 meters. So I have um, 20 meters um, by 30 meters. So it's a rectangular building. Just a simple building. You can have an irregular shape. Just add the dimensions of the perimeter. Right. So since 3 by 4 wood is used for wall plates and one length is 3 by 6 meter long so for the quantity we have the what the perimeter dimension divided by the length of one three by four wood so the perimeter is 100 meters so 100 meters divided by 3.6 so we are having 28 lengths of three inches by four inches wood i hope that's clear okay so we're looking at the next um that is the fissure board now this fissure board for this we are using wood to construct it concrete can also be used to construct the fissure boards right okay so a fissure board is the long straight board you see running along the edge of the roof right from the right where the roof meets the outer wall of a, of a building so it helps to keep your roof strong and your house looking neat while protecting it from weather damage. I don't know if you got this explanation. So when we see the image, you understand what a fissure board is, what we have been seeing, and we just maybe are not taking cognizance of it. So one by twelve wood are usually used for the concrete fissure, especially when it is wooden. But if it is concrete concrete is used so the length of the fissure board is calculated as the dimension of the wall 
plus the overhang on both edges right so this is kind of unique now you know we said the wall plate goes around the perimeter now this fascia board it starts from the perimeter wall outer wall then plus the overhang that is the length that's how to calculate the fascia board um, um, dimension looking at this image you can see the fascia board the arrow where it is pointing at that is what it is so we'll look at a quick example to be able to understand fully what a fascia board is and how to um, calculate it easily right so we need to consider a building of dimensions 9 meters by 18 meters so we have to estimate the quantity of fascia boards needed for the building this is just a very simple we are always we are just looking at a rectangular building right so this rectangular building will guide us in um, what we need to what we need to calculate the length of the fascia board so the fascia board now we are looking at it plus the overhang this is nine meters by nine meters by nine meters so the perimeter is you add everything together all right nine plus nine plus eighteen plus eighteen so this now we've added the overhang Valid overhang here. So since one length of these boards are three by six, three point six meters, so we have it as fifty four meters divided by three point six. Right? So we have fifteen numbers of one by twelve feet wood that is for the fissure board. So that dimension is the building length plus the overhang on both ends. And the overhang is usually 0 0.6 0 0.6 meters so on the four edges and if we get the explanation okay going forward you will be able to understand you should just go back and see the explanation given so the tie beam a tie beam in a roof is a horizontal wooden or steel beam in a roof structure that connects one side of the roof to the other just like the bottom of a triangle usually along the short span i don't know if you get this short explanation so it runs touching the perimeters where the wall plates so it touches the wall plate and then it has overhang of 0 0.6 on both ends and it's also running across the shorter direction so the job of this tie beam is to stop the roof from spreading apart under the weight of the roof materials then it also holds the sloping rafters together keeping the roof stable and helping it carry the load safely right so the wood that is usually used to buy two inches by six inches wood is usually used for tie beams a bigger size can also be used depending on the roof size or the what the roof is supposed to um, carry now looking at this image we look at the where the arrow is pointing at with the tie beam so it is pointing from one end to another look at the arrow can you see what the arrow is pointing at so that's the tie beam right so it connects one end to the other yeah so that is what the tie beam does so we need to look at a quick example to illustrate what this tie beam is all about so we are going to consider a building of 7.8 meters by 18 meters dimension so we are estimating the quantity of tie beams and we are spacing it at 1.2 meters for a building so the solution so we are looking at we should recall that the tie beam spans along the shorter direction right so from one end to another along the shorter di direction and the space starts on 1.2 meters so the number of tie beams required will not be the length you know the shorter direction is 7.8 so we are looking at how many do we need along this length we space it at 1.2 so to be the length divided by the spacing 
and that is what we have here 18 divided by 1.2 and we have 15 numbers of tie beam partition so the total length of the tie beam will now be 15 multiplied by 7.8 i don't know if you get so 7.8 is for one then 15 times you now have your 117 so since 2 by 6 inches wood is used for tie beam and one length is about 3.6 meters so we want to know how many we are actually needing right so we, um, the total number of 2 by 6 needed <laughs> The number of two by six inches wood needed will now be total length divided by length of one two by six inches wood. So that will be one one seven divided by three point six. I hope we understood this explanation. So we just need to go back and understand it very well that it is spanning along the short span, and then we need to know how many partitions. So after getting a member, you want to multiply by the length of one, and they want to know how many wood will be buying since each wood comes in 3.6 meters. So therefore, we need 33 numbers of two inches by six inches wood for the tie beams. So also we'll be looking at uh, the struct. Now the definition of the struct: the struct is sloping timber placed inside a roof framework. It connects the tie beam by the horizontal beam at the at the base and the rafters. I don't know if this makes sense. So the strut is what is connecting to form the the the, the, the truss, the complete truss is touching the tie beam at the base and also the rafter that is looping. That's just what this is all about. Now the job of the strut is to hold up the rafters and reduce the weight they carry, thereby helping to keep the roof strong and preventing sagging. It's as simple as that, just like it was. Like it's also slanting like um, the rafters, but it is in the other direction. So two by six wood are usually used where longer spans or heavier loads are involved. Smaller size can be used just depending on the type of load it is um, the roof is expected to carry. Right? So looking at this image, we're able to um, locate where our stroke is. And from the handwritten dimensions, we can see where the stroke is, what the stroke represents. Look at the arrow now, look at it. That is the strut. The rafter is in one direction, sloping in one direction. The strut is sloping in the other direction. It's connecting the rafter and the tie beams. So let's look at this very last um, example on the element. I divided this into two. So this is the first part. We'll be looking at the second part later. So we are considering a building of 9 meters by 18 meters in dimension. Now we are estimating the quantity of struts needed in the building. Look at the image there. You can see the, the image and the struct we need to, um, we intend to calculate for. So the quantity and the total numbers required will be the same as that of the tie beams as you can see we said it is connecting the tie beams to the rafters and it cannot work in isolation so what we calculated for our tie beams is still the same thing that we will use for the rafters if you look at the image you can see the rafters tie beam so anywhere you see your tie beam your struct is there to support this so that is why we are not doing this um, series of calculations again. So we are just taking what we have for our tie beams. We are putting it back in what we have in our strokes, right? So, thank you for watching this video. The second part of this um, this um, video will be sent, will be made and also sent so that you have a full understanding of 
the elements and what they do and how they are connected and how to calculate them fairly on field so if you know you've gotten value for this video you've just watched kindly like share and subscribe to this channel the merchants consultants and tutors for more educative and interactive sessions feel free to ask questions to post your questions on any of the videos you did not get um, clarity on right so you can share these videos to others both students and then practicing engineers fairly